lesson on linear demand equations, I showed you how to derive a linear demand equation using the data from a demand schedule or a demand curve. We walked through that whole process. We talked about how the A variable and the B variable could be calculated. And we came up with this equation that we see here, representing our demand for candy in my class among my 68 students in a week. In this lesson, I want to show you a little bit more how we can use this demand equation to calculate the quantities demanded at different prices. And we're also going to start talking about what can cause a change in the demand equation and a shift in the demand curve, including changes in both the A variable and or the B variable in our equation. So first, let's go through a quick demonstration of how we can use our demand equation to calculate the different quantities demanded at different prices. Of course, we have our demand schedule and our demand curve, and it's pretty easy to see from those the quantity demanded at any particular price. For example, $1.50. We can see on our demand curve that at $1.50, exactly 300 units of candy are demanded weekly by my students. It's also easy to see that at $2, 200 units of candy are demanded. But the question is, what if we had a price that wasn't easily observable on our demand curve or in our demand schedule? What if we had a price in between the prices visible in our demand schedule? For example, what if I wanted to know how much candy would be demanded at a price of $1.72? Notice that $1.72 is not on our demand schedule. It's somewhere between $1.50 and $2. Therefore, I know that the quantity is going to be somewhere between 300 and 200 units. But what I'd like to know is exactly how much candy would be demanded at that price. Well, good thing I have my demand equation. All I need to do is plug my price into my equation, and we'll do that now. And we'll calculate the quantity demanded at a price of $1.72. So I know my equation is quantity demanded equals 600. That was our A variable. All right, that's our A variable. Minus 200, that's our B variable, times the price. The B variable is the price coefficient. Let's simplify that equation now. If I want to know the quantity at a price of 172, I can just replace my P with $1.72. And now I can simply solve for QD. So quantity demanded equals 600 minus 200 times 172. Let's do that now. 200 times $1.72 gives me 344. I can plug that in here. Now to solve for my quantity demanded at a price of 172, I simply solve for QD. 600 minus 344, let's do that. I get 256. I have just determined that at a price of $1.72, the quantity demanded will equal 256 units of candy. Now that's what's nice about having a demand equation. We can determine exactly what the quantity demanded will be at any price between the Q intercept, which is where the demand curve starts on our horizontal axis, and the P intercept, which is where our demand curve ends on the vertical axis. That brings me to another point that I want to talk about. And that is actually how to calculate the price intercept of demand. Now, what is the price intercept? The P intercept, as it's called, is the price at which quantity demanded equals zero. It is where the demand curve starts. Now, th this one's pretty obvious. We can see that the demand curve, since it's a straight line, would begin at $3. In other words, at a price of $3, zero candy would be demanded among my students. But what if we did not have a simple line intersecting the p-axis at a very obvious point. We could always solve for the price intercept by setting the quantity demanded to zero. So the steps to do this are very simple. We set QD to zero and solve for P. We can do that now just to prove that the p-intercept of demand for my equation here is $3. Let's use this equation. We'll set QD to zero. We get zero equals 600 minus 200P. I can move my 200 over here and another 200P equals 600. 
and we'll divide both sides by 200. And the price at which quantity demanded equals zero is $3. So again, this would have been very easy to tell because we have a linear demand equation here. In fact, if I had continued my table down one more level to $3, I can see that the quantity demand would have fallen to zero, but it won't always be so obvious what the p-intercept is. And this is the method that you must use to determine the price intercept if you are asked to do so. Okay, we're going to end this lesson here. And in our next lesson, we're going to talk about some of the factors that can shift the demand curve, including things that could change both the A variable and the B variable in the demand equation. Here we go.